after he violently attacked and stomped on a MoveOn.org supporter's head. A former coordinator for the Rand Paul campaign, Tim Profit, takes a page out of the Ginny Thomas playbook, blames the victim, and now Mr. Profit wants Lauren Valley to consider apologizing to him. But in our fourth story, will a new video of the moments before the assault distract from all that? Speaking with WKYT in Lexington, Kentucky, Prophet says he doesn't believe his actions were that big a deal. Even so, he refused to show his face on camera. I would like for her to apologize to me, to be honest with you. Prophet, uh, showing here with his face somewhat exposed, at least one of them, explaining that Ms. Valley was a professional and, quote, initiated the whole thing. And if his actions seemed extreme, it was due to his medical condition. I put my foot on her, and I, and I did push her down at the very end, and I told her to stay down. I actually put my foot on, on her to, I couldn't bend over uh, because I have issues with my back. Your issues are. The victim, Lauren Valley, appeared on this news hour last night and explained her objective in attending the event was to have Rand Paul see a sign she had brought. Here is part of her account. As Rand's car pulls up, uh, they step in front of me and start to block me, and so I stepped off the curb to try and get around them. And at that point, they pursued me around the car, um, chased me around the car, and what you see in the video is when I'm in the front of the car, and that's when I'm pulled down. As you are about to see, Ms. Valley was truthful in her description of what happened, which she failed to mention that. Uh, in a sense, she did achieve her that objective that, that she described. Newly released video we did not have access to last night shows Ms. Valley approaching Mr. Paul's car with her sign. She was then held back before heading to the front of the car. <laughs> After that, Ms. Valley was dragged to the ground and stomped on the head after any possible mistake of a threat had clearly been avoided. MoveOn.org released the following statement about the incident. Quote, Lauren made no secret of the fact that she was trying to get a picture with Rand Paul and her satirical sign at this event. If the candidate or any of his supporters felt threatened by a girl with a poster, once they had pulled her away from the car, the threat had passed. Nothing justifies the violence of her head being stomped on the curb once she was on the ground. This is nothing less than the men... Uh, this is nothing less than the men involved and the Paul campaign once again trying to justify an obvious assault once they have been exposed. Joining me now, Democratic strategist Chris Kafinas. Chris, good evening. Good evening, Keith. The right, uh, through uh, Fox News and other outlets of that sort, used that new video and said essentially, see, she didn't tell the whole story. Does that uh, tactic work in that case? Does that new video change the story in any material way? doesn't change it one iota. I mean, you know, maybe I'm old-fashioned, but you don't make excuses about violence. Uh, and, you know, and it's even worse when it comes to violence uh, against this woman. I mean, this, this was a, a gross overreaction. Even if you could, you know, tolerate, you know, the, the notion that somehow they were concerned about Paul's security, then you could have easily held her back. But this was aggressive, it was over the top, and it was violent. And that, you know, Paul's campaign hasn't gone further in terms of apologizing more than he has, uh, I, I find, you know, disturbing. And I think, you know, this is going to be a problem for this campaign over the remaining days. Yeah, if she were a serious threat at any point in the other video as the car comes out, uh, the actual security people either wouldn't let the car stop, it would have the car keep going until they knew where she was, or they would have gotten her out of the way uh, in some way. And they, clearly they didn't think she was any kind of threat because they just let her go. But... The story itself and the, and the politics of this, does it have the proverbial legs politically? Can it affect that Senate race or, in fact, are Rand Paul supporters happy with that imagery of boot heel on head? Uh, it, it could. You know, these kind of events that happen during the last days of, a, of an election can have, you know, dramatic effects. Uh, in, the, in the case of the, the Kentucky race, I mean, you had a tight race that I think then moved towards, you know, Paul's favor with the Aqua Buddha ad that seemed to hurt Conway. Now I think this 
uh, particular event, a particular action, and the coverage that it's getting, I can only imagine the coverage it's getting in, in the state of Kentucky, I think it has a chance uh, to affect the, the outcome. In particular, if you look at the recent polling, uh, that came out today, you know, amongst registered voters, it's basically a statistical tie. Amongst likely voters, Paul has about a seven-point lead. But I think in terms of two critical groups, women and undecideds, mm -hmm. this could have an impact. It really kind of depends on the dynamics over the last uh, few days. But, you know, it's a tough state, uh, conservative state, and it's obviously a tough state for Conway, but it could have an impact. Uh, the symbolism there, the, the, the uh, Mr. Prophet, who's asking for an apology, would not would not allow his face to be shown during the interview, even though his picture <laughs> is everywhere on the internet with Rand Paul. Uh, we'll see this later on uh, in, the, in the special comment, this video of Christine O'Donnell trying to get a videotape of a radio interview that she did destroyed because she couldn't control it. And there's a gesture that she makes during it. Uh, Sharon Angle just said, again, she's not going to do any interviews. Uh, does this raise any alarms with unenthusiastic Democrats or with independents? You know, the, 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 the hey, wait a minute moment that these people are afraid to face questions or defend their positions with facts or, you know, will only do so if their backs are turned to the camera? Well, if it doesn't, I'm not sure uh, what, what could. I mean, we've had a lot of hey, wait a moments in this election. Yeah. I mean, the, these are, and I've said this before, some of the most extreme radical candidates running on the Republican tickets across the country that I've seen in my life that I think most of us have seen in our life. Some of these candidates, if they win, are going to take this country in a radical, I would argue, potentially dangerous, ex definitely extreme uh, direction. I think the one thing that is frustrating me and has frustrated me this entire cycle is to be frank about it, I don't think we have done, and the White House has done, a good enough mm -hmm. job of, point, of pointing this out, of painting this narrative that the choice isn't about Republicans and Democrats. It isn't about mainstream America and Republicans. It's about mainstream and extreme. Mm -hmm. And these are the candidates that could win. And so I think it has a chance, if you take all of these actions that have been happening over this cycle, uh, to motivate and mobilize disaffected, not only Democrats, but I would say undecideds and moderates. I think it just, I think people have to really think long and hard of how critical this election is. Mainstream versus extreme. I think you got something with that. We got six days. Go ahead. Democratic strategist Chris Kafinas, thank you for that. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Keith.